cannot always be night. I'm excited for today because it's two months since I've been growing my undercut and to be honest with you This would this is the toughest journey that I have to do and with all your help and Engagement I was able to survive my two months man. I thank you everybody that's been commenting in the past videos telling me to give up to do certain things to avoid the quote unquote, you know, ugly or what y'all call now, rough stage. And so I appreciate you guys for that because it really kept me going. A lot of you guys are doing kind of the same thing and also some of you guys are restarting your dreadlocks or starting a dreadlock. So thank you for being on the same journey with me. Today I'm gonna be updating you guys. Where is that right now? How long it is? What it's looking like? And we're gonna be doing some towel rub method to curl it up even more. When I began this journey uh, of on a growing my undercut, I had mentioned to you guys the reason why I started them and that is because I truly wanted originally a mohawk dreadlocks and it was kind of like tough for me to grow up in the back of my hair because it get really nappy and that's where I sleep at the most you know I sleep like this usually I don't know how you sleep but when I sleep my face is up to the Lord I be looking at my heavenly father and so this pat the, the back of my head be pat back you know just just dry as shuck the most friction is happening there so that that's that's where the most tangled hair happens and so when I pick up my hair it really hurt I'm tender-headed it was not vibrant with me but right now I've been committed to do that to grow it out and that's why I look a little rough today I'm gonna be doing a shape up today also in this video I'm gonna show you guys how I do my little low taper fade or you can call it like a taper in general but I want to make sure that I look good with this process I know this process ain't gonna be good but I gotta look good doing it you know what I mean you gotta get some motivation from somewhere and this is how I kind of cope with it. So if you guys want to learn how to cut hair, this is actually a great video to watch it through and learn with that also. All right, I just cranked my ISO up just a little bit so you guys can see the rough part, patchiness and stuff like that. I'm gonna close that closet so that it doesn't distract you. All right, so yeah, I have it in the braid right now, my drill lock itself. I'm gonna be taking it out, I believe, this Saturday. So if you guys don't know when I upload, I usually upload Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and also notification button. So this is what my hair is at right now. It looks really terribly bad. <laughs> what is going on back there, fam? I can't fully see it, so let me just check it out real quick. So so you guys can see some curliness that's really popping in my hair. My wife loves it. A lot of people are like, what the heck? I didn't know your hair was this soft. Because they're surprised by it, you know? And I mean, my hair is really nice and soft. I think it's a 4A or 4B. But at the same time, like I haven't been, I haven't been growing short hair for a while. So it's unique to a lot of people to see my hair being sh that short and growing it, of course. I had talked to my loctician to try to see if I can get extension or something like that. And she had mentioned that this is kind of like too short that I'm gonna be ripping out a lot of my hair, trying to do this, trying to crochet needle it to an extension. So I'm gonna just wait maybe one more month so that I can have a better length, I would say, than where I'm at right now. And I'm really concerned about growing just this part, like a mohawk, so like, boom. And then on that side, kind of like the same way, boom. So I'm not really trying to look, looking to grow out the sides or like a full head, cause I'm not about that life, man. And then I'm gonna grab a towel and while it's dry, I tried it wet one time, a little wet, and it didn't seem like it was really working out. I'm thinking it's because this towel method with the microfiber likes to grab on things. And so it's really good when it's dry and you use it a microfiber towel to just rotate it. And when you rotate it, you want to rotate it on which direction that you want to see it curling up. So my dreadlocks, originally it was a twist, a one twist, a single twist, or like a coil method. <coughs> finger coiled together and then when I turn it to dreadlocks it's been always twisted this way so that's how I, I want to get the rest of the dreadlocks I don't want to make them different because then you know it'll cause some problems of it coming out later on so or actually this is clockwise not counterclockwise this is clockwise I don't look bad let's see if I can get some more going on right here
Y'all know this ain't easy at all, man. Y'all know this tough. <laughs> this this journey is tough, man. I never had to like. In a way, when I had a shorter hair, it was easy for me to just, you know, taper it or fade it up and it looks good. But when you're growing something that you can't even taper or give it a lineup, or oh, and you have a full draw log long as heck, it's awkward. It'd be getting awkward. So when I wear my hair, I usually rock it down or something like that to where it covers this part. And since I'm gonna be taking this out on the next video, I'm kinda glad that I'm gonna be back to that. Cause I mean with three, like with three hair all together braided, it's kinda hard to cover that part. And I don't like wearing my hair down, so it's a lot going on right now. Alright guys, this is when I cut my this is where I cut my hair usually. I have a uh, tuli right here, like a lineup type of uh, uh, barber tool and then my fading clip which is my magic uh, clip cordless you don't really need the best tools to start with this or to even give yourself a really good nice taper you just need to have two machines like these one for lineup one for fade and to be honest with you for those people that you know say you have to have the right tools the good tools and stuff like that that's all a lie because it's like at the end of the day what matters is your lineup being crispy and the fade looking like it's blended in you know what i mean unless you're really like a barber or something like that that's when you have to worry about your clippers but if you're not a barber don't worry about these you will upgrade in time let's start with something and that's kind of like how i did it and this is not the the best out there but which this kind of is one of the best ones out there or good ones great ones this one it kind of is too but i don't like mine i think i need to sharpen it and like change the blade and stuff like that but i'll use what i got i'm not going to complain so use what you got or go to walmart and pick up a clipper start cutting don't give up cut your brothers your sisters uh i don't know if sisters cut here i don't know i don't know why i say sister get your skill up and then you know do it for yourself because the pandemic taught you that you know what i mean i usually like taper just low taper right here low taper up here because i don't want to get into around here because once i lock it up that's when i know which one i need to cut so till i do that i don't know exactly how far back i can go so i usually just touch up this part maybe some up here and then blend it in basically so that's kind of what i'm gonna do today I'm thinking about going higher today since I've been going really low and it just grows right back out. I'm gonna go to the higher, ball it out a little bit. One of the best keys I can give you is brushing is really good. And throughout this, I'm gonna give you tips too. So brushing is really good because this is what straightens out your hair. Because some hair be just up here, like turning this way and that way. And so you won't be able to get it with the clipper if, it, if it's turning the opposite way. So you wanna take it down and boom. And uh, whenever you get you clippers, make sure you get the right guards. There is some that are missing on the regular Walmart clippers. And so make sure you get the right guards and you can find that video also of the right guards to get on uh, when I did a or how to cut your hair video. Whenever you're cutting your hair, always make sure you're flicking up. Cause if you're not flicking it up, then you'll end up getting another guideline so there's steps how you cut your fade or fade out your hair you want to go with the flick of the wrist so when you flick it like that you're able to blend your hair even better whenever you're cutting your hair with the clipper you always want to use especially if you're doing the, the the taper or a side cut or on the side of your head use the corners of the blade don't use the whole the whole thing like this even if you're flicking just because it's more better if you use the corner and you're flicking up you're able to get that smooth blend in your cut another trick that i do is if i know where i want to go how high I usually end up going the other way to bring the bulk down to see that's where I want it to end. I caught some bulk. So the fade is coming in pretty nice. I see some dark spots so I want to just perfect that and then I'm going to move on. Now I'm going to come in with the same clipper that you line up yourself with. You don't have the balder, which my shaver or a balder is dead. It's been dead for like a decade, man. I don't know where the charger went to. I'm still trying to look for it. I'm trying to find it. I can't find it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this and really bald out that bald spot so that you have a really nice fade going up. I'm 
my beard is kind of getting a lot more like growth going on with my beard so like i literally cut it recently i already have a whole connected dot right here connect a line connect the line which i don't like connecting it right now because this side doesn't connect fully so what i usually do is i shave that part out match it with this part line my neck up and i like to look a little younger too i don't like to look really old so let's get it I line myself up down here, I usually lift up my hair, you know, the main hair can be out the way and then use my baby hairs to line them up because baby hairs, you don't want them in your draw locks really because they're really soft and so you don't want to risk, you know, damaging it. I know I talk about how you should, you know, bring your dreadlocks down all the way to the front, but usually whenever even you do the front, you want to leave the baby hair because those are the very sensitive part of your hair. You don't want to lose them. So don't put them in your dreadlocks, just leave them as is and line them up. Like use them just to line up. And boom, just like that, you're done. I'm done, we done. So this is the journey of growing undercut, the struggle with it, and also how to overcome it, and some quick tips also to avoid uh, looking really rough, and that is lining yourself up, tapering yourself up, learning these methods will save you long way in the long term. God forbid another pandemic happen, know how to cut yourself. You dig what I'm saying? Thank you guys for watching this video. But till next time, keep acting diverse and creating your universe. Make sure you check out our new channel, Pineapple World, where, we, where we've been featuring a lot of people just like you to inspire, educate, and build a community. Peace out. God bless.